Hey everyone, how you all doing? Blue here, back with our Minecraft Medieval Castle tutorial. So, before we get started, let me just quickly apologise for the lack of videos over the last week, guys. I've been uh, so busy working on the server, getting things all in place for that, and busy in real life as well. There's been a lot going on over the last couple of weeks, um, but I think most of it is all sorted and in place now, so we can get back to a normal schedule. Now for those of you that don't know, we will be launching a Minecraft server on the 2nd of June. So if you want to join up and become a member, it's going to be available to patrons and channel members. I'll leave links to both in the description if you're interested. Or you can also check out my previous video which gives you a bit more information about it. It's going to be a Java Minecraft server, so it's only going to be available to Java players. Um, so I do apologize to Bedrock and console players, but I only play on Java, so at the moment it's only going to be a Java server. Now, with that being said, guys, I think it's about time that we jump back into the castle. I know a bunch of you have been waiting for the next tutorial, and I think today what we're going to do is we're going to work a little bit on the outside. So we're going to start getting in some of them trees, some of the garden areas, some of the little details just to neaten up the outside of the castle and make it look a little bit more complete on the outside at least. So, with that being said, let's dive into the world and let's get building. Okay guys, we're going to start with the catapult. I know a bunch of you guys have been asking me how to build this and it's actually a really, really simple design. There is not much to it at all. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to actually build it over on the tower on the other side there. So once you've built it there, just go ahead and repeat it on this tower here. I'm not going to build it twice. There's not really any need to do that. So let's head over there and get it built. Okay, once you're up on this tower here, guys, make sure that you are facing towards the castle when you build this. That way you know that the catapult is going to be facing the correct direction. Now, let's head over to this wall here, which is on the same side as the castle. And right on the centerpiece here, we're going to place three of our cobblestone slabs. Then at each side, you want to place a oak stair like this. On the inside here, we're going to put two, one, two, and then one, two right there. And then we can get rid of the ones underneath like this. On the other side here, we want to do something pretty much the same. So put a stair at each side like that. And then on the top here, we can just crouch and we can place one just in there. Perfect. Now we're going to put a slab here. Then another slab against it and then one more. So we should have three slabs coming down. Put one on top here. Then all we're going to do here is pretty much until we reach this wall here, we're going to just keep stepping them up. So go slab, up one, slab, up one. All the way across until we're in line with the wall over here. So let's just keep bringing that across. All the way to there. See that one there is in line with the wall there. Okay, now that that's all in place, we're going to come over to this stair that we placed here. We're going to leave a three block gap and then place a spruce stair here. And we're going to do exactly the same on this side. So we're going to place a stair there. Upside down stair behind it. Place a temporary block here and then a stripped spruce log here. Break that one there and place two more on this side. A button on this end and a button on this end. Then place an upside down spruce there here. And then again, we're going to repeat that on this side. And then a normal one on top. Now, what we're going to do here is leave a one block gap from that upside down stair and place a normal stair. Then we can go behind it and place an upside down stair. Do that on both sides. Place a spruce stair on top of that one. Spruce stair on top of this one. And there we go, we've got all of the framing in place for it. Now, just to make it look like it's a bit more mechanical, we're going to get our spruce fence. We're going to place one just there. Then we're going to go to our iron bars. We're going to place one underneath. Then we're going to place one inwards. Then carefully, we need to crouch and place one underneath, one inwards, and then place one here and then one there. And you can place one more just underneath just so it connects to this beam here. And then that should be good to go. So if we jump up now, as you can see, we've got ourselves a nice looking catapult. 
Okay, now on to the tree designs. Now, before we get started with the trees, guys, it's important that we kind of just go over a few things first. Now, most of the tree designs that I've got inside the castle are very simple designs that can be replicated super easy. However, when it comes to larger tree designs, like this one particular one that I have in the castle, which is a bit of an oak kind of style tree, these tree designs can be a little bit more temperamental when you're trying to build them because it's not easy to remember exactly how every leaf block is laid out on top. So sometimes you're not happy with it, you have to take a few leaves off or add a few more leaves in certain places. So while we build this particular tree, which we're going to do first because it's the most difficult tree, um, you want to just bear in mind that there's likely going to be changes as we're going along to make sure that the tree looks right because we can't always guarantee exactly how it's going to look because trying to remember where every single leaf block is placed is going to be very, very tough. So we're going to dive in with this one first of all, guys, but just please remember that in mind. So we might end up taking a few leaves off at the end. We might end up removing stuff. We might end up adding stuff. OK, so just keep that in mind for the build. Uh, but with that being said, let's dive straight in and get this built. Okay, guys, now I'm going to do my best to replicate this tree the best I can. But like I said, it might not be perfect. Now, when it comes to placement, you can kind of place this anywhere in this area that you like. I'm going to kind of go over to this corner here because I want to sort of keep this side here a little bit more open near the pathway to go up to the castle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right in the middle here. So from the left hand side, we're going to skip this section here and right in the middle here. I'm just going to put some blocks here. Ignore this for a moment. This is just so you guys can see a marking. And then the same on this side here. We're going to join it up and we're going to head to this block here. OK, so this is where we're going to build the tree. Just so you guys can see exactly where it lines up. Now we're going to go on top there. So we've got one already. We're going to go two, three, four and five. Then I'm going to place one here, one here and one here. Now, before we detail up the shape of the bottom and stuff like that, let's work out the branches. Now, the branches are going to be the toughest point here. So we're going to start by going one here, one here, one here, one here. We're going to put one up on each of these sides and one up on that side. This one here, we're going to go one, two and then break that one. This one here, we're going to go one, two, three like this, almost stepping them and then break these two. This side here, we're going to slightly do a bit different. So we're going to put one here, one here, one here, one here, one here. Break one, two, and that should be good. Now, if you want to make sure the bark faces the same way, you can always mess around like that to make sure that they face the same way. But I don't think it's particularly necessary, especially with the stripped woods. Now, for this one over here, we're going to go one here, one over. Then we're going to go up one. We're going to go over one, up one. And I think that will do. We'll break that one and we'll break that one. Now, the key thing to remember here is that you need platforms for where you're going to be building all of your leaves and stuff. OK, so now that we've got these basic branches here, we want to kind of just make them spread out a little bit. So let's go ahead and make this one come up one. We can come over, maybe one there and we can come a diagonal across. OK, and break these ones here so that we have this kind of shape here. OK, we want to create lots of branches because the more branches we have in place, the easier it will be to actually make the tree look more full and more sort of uh, more bushy and make it look more realistic. Now from here, I'm going to actually use this log here and I'm going to come up one and I'm going to come over to this one, break that one and that one. We're going to come up here because I want to have a little bit of a center point. So maybe, maybe just to there, we'll actually come over one here something like that and we can actually get rid of that one so it sort of curls around there and then up here again we're gonna just maybe bring one to there we can break that one and um, we can bring one to there i know it looks a bit messy at the moment but it's because we're keeping the tree fairly small 
So the branches might look a little bit all over the place, but they'll make sense once we get everything in place. Um, for this one here, I think I'm going to actually bring it to the front. A bit like that. This side here, I think we're going to just come out one. Up one and out one. To about there. In fact, no, we're not. We're going to actually just go out one like that. Okay, now we've got that in place. Let's, um, let's just add a few little details here. So we're going to put in a stair on top of these two. And in fact, no, we'll put a stair at the back, a stair at the side, and then a slab at the front here. We're going to put a slab there. This side, we're going to put in a stair. And then I guess we'll put in a slab just there. That makes it look a bit stronger down the bottom. Then down here, we just want to make it look a bit thicker in some places. So we're going to put like a stair there, a slab there, a slab there, maybe a slab there, slab there, slab there maybe. Then get your fences, the spruce fence that is, and we're going to place one there, one there. And you kind of just want to place a few of them randomly underneath or at the side of some of these blocks, okay? We don't need too many, but enough to just use as almost like little branches that are going to be just hanging down um, when you're looking at the tree. Maybe one each on there. And then you can just place an odd one or two. Maybe on top like this. Okay. Now the branch layout don't look great, but it doesn't matter because we're going to be covering this up. The key thing here is just to make sure you've got enough kind of coverage to kind of make a canopy over the top of it, if that makes sense. Now what I often do here, first of all, is kind of give myself a guide shape. So what I'll do is I'll start from this side. So we'll put one, two, three, like this. Now, from the top here, we basically just want to make a kind of ovalish shape around the edges here. Okay, it hasn't got to be a perfect oval or anything like that, and you don't want it to be a perfect oval. Just kind of curved. So I tend to do things like go three across like this. We can then go two, bring one in, get rid of that one. One here, bring two in, break that corner one, like that. So as you can see, we're kind of curving it around. Now, we don't want this to look even in any sort of way. So let's go one, two, let's go three, four, one diagonally there. The diagonally come over. Let's go two there. Um, three, four, and then we'll come in here. We'll leave just one on that bit. Bring in two here. Let's go out by, say, one, and then out again. We can do three here. Let's go in, we'll go one there, let's go in, one on here, and then I guess we'll go one more on there. That kind of gives us a kind of a guided shape. Now if we take a look from above, you can see it's certainly not sort of a, a perfect oval in any way, and you don't want it to be. So we just want it to kind of look something kind of like that. If I face towards the castle, this is the shape that we've got. So start by getting in a shape like that. Then what I like to do is I like to kind of work out how high the tree is going to be. So from the center point roughly on one side, let's go one here. We'll go in by one like that. So we're going to step up. We basically want to give ourselves a curve over the top. So let's go in. Let's go one more on there, I think. No, because we're going to go down. Let's actually just keep it at one. Then we're going to go in again. And then we go one more. Let's do something similar on this side. So in line with that one roughly, we want to go one there. We'll put two on this side. Then we go up one. Up one again. And then let's just put a line to join them up. Now some of these bite might be removed in a moment. We're just giving ourselves a guided shape. So there you go, it's kind of, we're kind of seeing the shape of the tree now. Now let's go ahead and let's do the same on this side. So we're going to go something um, about, about there I guess. We'll go two up there maybe, then we we'll go one up. Then we're going to go in by two, 
up by one and we just join that to there again a little bit of a different shape for this side and then finally for this side let's go one here i think we're just going to stick with one there we'll go one uh sorry one there one there and then we'll go diagonally down one more to there okay now that's looking pretty good now at this point here we've got a bit of a shape for the top which ain't necessarily something we're going to stick 100% to it's just giving us a guide underneath here now what i like to start doing is making some kind of dangly vines to each other so we'll go from this one we'll go down one maybe in one down one over by one over by two and then we'll connect up there a little bit of a curl down see Let's do the same again somewhere over here. Let's go one there, one there. Then because we've got this one here, we're going to bring it out. Break that one behind. And then we'll connect it to that corner there. Now, as you can see, I filled this one in here. We're connecting to this corner here. But what we're going to do is we can go up one, break that one. So we've got a little bit of an air block. And just keep repeating the pattern. So we're going to go one here. Then we're going to go diag diagonally this time. Because I'm trying to follow the line of the that we've put in from above. There we go, something like that. Now this side here, because we're at the wall here, we're going to actually just put one in underneath there. And I think we can probably get away with one just there. Over at the corner here, we can just keep it pretty simple. Let's go down one there. We'll go down two here, break that one above. And then we're going to put one outwards. So let's put one there one just behind it there and then get rid of that one which gives us a little bit of a fuller corner like this now at this point here guys we're gonna actually start making this a little bit thicker now as you can see we have actually gone up quite high so i think what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually get rid of the top level there we don't need to come up any higher than this one so let's come across and join those up Like that because otherwise we've got too much airspace on the inside here and it's just gonna feel a little bit out of place so now let's start filling in some of this area so what i tend to do is kind of use a bit sort of um not quite triangles but as you can see we go up one up one up one down two we don't want to put one here again to make it look the same as this side we want to look make it look a bit different almost like if you're building a mountain you know you're trying to make a natural sort of bit of shape so now we're going to come up. So let's go one in here, one up, one there. Um, and then we're going to go back a couple. Leave that corner one there. Let's put one here, one here. We'll come back one. And now we're just kind of trying to fill the little bit of space that we have. Without overdoing it. So let's do something like that. Right. Now that gives us quite a nice shape. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually start breaking a couple in here. So let's break one there. So we've got a little bit of open space. And yeah, that looks pretty good. Over here, I think we're going to break that one there. Just to give us a bit more open space. Now, once you've got that in place, let's do the same on this side. So we want to start again, just bringing up some random kind of shapes, bringing it in, joining it up into the corners. Um, and just kind of making it feel like it's almost like an umbrella over the top of the tree. You know, you're just trying to make a cover. Now, at this point, it doesn't have to be anything perfect. Yeah, it's just got to be a rough kind of cover. Underneath here, I did miss a little bit. But on some of these, you can just make little bits to stick down singly. Like little dangly, um, kind of almost like vines. But it's more so just really a bit of the bushes just hanging down and then just fill a bit of the space something along these lines okay you know you can even go ahead and do what we've done before something like that and then get rid of that one there maybe something like that and then we could maybe even put one leaf on that one you know put one here break that one it's a matter of really playing around um, now we're going to go ahead. I think we're going to put a hole just there. Um, I think we've got a good few holes there. That's good. Now don't worry. We're going to be putting some leaves on the inside here in just a moment. But at the moment we're just creating the canopy. 
So let's do the same thing here. Let's go up. We can go in all the way and up. Then we'll do something like this. And then join that one there. Okay. So again, we're filling in a bit more of a cover. Now this one here, again, we're going to follow the exactly same pattern. No different. Um, on some of them we can come up one, on some of them we just go in one. The idea is to kind of make it just look, not look the same, you know. You don't want it to all look the same shape. So you want to kind of just keep messing around with the shape so that it looks a bit different each time. Okay, and there you go. We've left a couple of holes there. I think we're going to add another hole just there. Um, got one there already, maybe one there. You want it to look a little bit thinned out. You don't want it to look too thick. Uh, not in any areas at all. You don't want it looking thick. So let's go ahead. Let's get rid of that one and put one down. Gives us a bit more of an opening there. We can actually bring one there, one there, and then break that one. Okay, that's starting to look good. Now, if we go onto the inside here, you can see it's very open here. We don't want this. Let's go ahead and we're going to bring a couple in. So we don't want too many here. We just want to play space a few of them in, fill in a few of the gaps, make it just look like some of the bushes um, are coming onto the inside here. Um, anywhere you have some big air gaps like here, um, it's all good to show you, but there. You can see we've got this, um, this fence here and an empty space on top. So let's go ahead and just put one on top like that, maybe from one at the side. Okay. So we start filling in some of the sort of air gaps between. And just bring them down. Something like this. And then occasionally, if you wanted to, you can just bring one like this and then just go one, two maybe. Just to make it come down and out. Make it look a little bit fuller on the inner, inner sort of edge. Try and cover up the higher, um, the higher blocks of... Um, strip spruce but not the lower ones okay and then at the very top there you can see we've got quite a lot of airspace here what we're going to do is just place in a few blocks making sure you leave a few air gaps as well okay something like that okay and then we're going to put one in there one on top of that one. And we'll bring one out and break that one at the back. One underneath there. And there we go, guys. You can see we're starting to get that shape of the oak tree now. So now what you want to do is you want to just add in a couple of little sort of overhangs at the edge. Something like this. And if you don't like the look of it, if it looks too straight, what you can do is you can put one kind of going like this and then break one so that you get a bit of an angle which makes it feel a little bit more sort of a uh, bit more real then we're going to go down like this and then there you go look i mean we got it looks pretty round you know personally so if it was me i would be coming and making some changes something like placing one here going down a couple like that we can always break one there just to give it a little bit more of a natural feel one underneath and you can always thicken up the outside edges anywhere you're not happy with, you know, to make it feel a little bit more like a sort of a um, bit more of a rougher tree, I guess. You can break some and move some around as needed. I like to have these kind of curved gaps in between. So sometimes, sometimes some of these are a little bit too much. We want to keep them a little bit higher up. Like that, so that we get that sort of opening at the bottom there. We don't want to bring it all too low. If we bring it all too low, you're not going to see part of the branches there. And it's going to just start feeling a little bit sort of, um, a little bit too closed up. You know, so make sure you leave plenty of open areas. Now, once you've got yourself quite a few open areas as well, you can also go ahead and 
if you break some, you might find where some of your um, branches are, like there, some of the oak, the strip spruce, so I keep saying oak, and just bring out, you know, the odd sort of fence. We can then connect it up. Um, you can even add in an extra block of, um, of your spruce if you wanted to. So if you came onto the inside here, like you can see in here, it's pretty open. We could put another one just here, for instance. Uh, but again, it's pretty open here. Let's go ahead and just cover up a little bit of the area on the inside. There we go. I'm starting to like this now. This is starting to take a bit more of the shape that I was going for. Let's, um, let's bring it out a little bit. So we're going to put one like that. We're going to break that one and maybe bring one out there. Maybe bring one here. Yeah, that's starting to look good. Now on top here, guys, you don't want it to feel too sort of flat either. So be sure to mess around here um, and bring any areas up that you need to to make it feel a little bit more um, organic, I guess. You know, make the shape here very different, very off. Get rid of a few on the top so that you have some rough shapes. You can even go ahead and just place a couple of odd ones like this. So that you get a little bit more of that sort of, you know, rough top. It doesn't look so flat. Yeah, overall guys, I think that isn't too bad. I think that has turned out okay. Um, but like I say, just keep playing around with it until you're happy with it. Add some leaves if you don't like it, then take away some. If you don't, if it's, if it's not feeling thick enough, then add some more. But make sure you fill in the top area on the inside a bit. You know, you need to have a little bit of sort of bush on the inside here, but you want to make sure that you keep some air gaps because if you don't have those air gaps, you're not going to see the light come through it, and it's just going to look too much like a very sort of um, too much of a bushy tree. You know, trees have branches coming out here and there, and that's what you want. Um, and like I said, don't be afraid to go ahead and put in some more fences and allow them to actually be seen. So something like this, bringing them out. This is really good. So you want to put in plenty like this. And as you can see, we can bring one there. We can actually even probably actually get one in there and then there. That's good. We can put one in here. The more of these you see and the more that they sort of pop out, the more it kind of um, makes it feel a little bit more, a little bit more natural. See, that really helps the tree already. Just go around and, you know, put as many of them in as you can without making it look like it's too full of branches or something. Like I said, with trees, it's one that you really have to play with. Now, I don't want to overdo too much time on this tree because of the time in this tutorial, guys. So just go ahead, play around with it until you're happy with the style and the layout of it. Uh, but yeah, just make sure you keep some open space. I think what really makes a tree nice is when you've got plenty of open space and air blocks. You know, you need to be able to see through it. So that it doesn't look too thick, you know, because realistically, you look at a tree, you can always see through the trees. There's only so many leaves that are in place. So make sure that you've got plenty of air blocks. Okay, guys, so here's what the tree looks like without the bushy leaves, okay? So this is the complete vanilla texture pad. This is just as it is in default. Now, as you can see, it's a lot thinner, of course, um, but it still looks really cool. It doesn't look overly bushy, and it certainly doesn't look overly thin either. You know, I think this makes a really nice kind of style for the tree. Um, and yeah, I really like it. I think this works really good. Now, I do have two more different tree designs to show you. So I'm going to go ahead again and build them with the bushy leaves. And then I'm going to show you what they look like without the bushy leaves. Now, of course, they do look a lot better with the bushy leaves texture pack. But if you're playing on console or bedrock or something like that, and you don't have access to the bushy leaves, then you can see exactly how they still look. And I think they still look pretty cool, guys. I really like the designs of them. Either way, I think they look perfect. So, with that being said, let's dive in and do the birch tree first of all. Okay, so the birch tree I'm going to build on this corner here. So, we're just building it next to the oak tree. 
Now I think we're gonna come probably to around about here. I want it fairly close to the um, to the wall edge here. So from this corner here, we're gonna go one. Now if you wanna build it in exactly the same location, we're right one block away from this little three block row of blocks and we're one, two, three, four, five blocks away from this pillar here. Okay, so if you wanna build it in the same location, you can. Now we've got two there. We're gonna go three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11 i think now i think this works really well somewhere between sort of 9 and 13 blocks in height this one is 11. now what we'll do is on the very top here we're going to put two of our birch leaves okay now don't worry guys like i said we will show you what it looks like in default as soon as we're done now heading down to the bottom i'm gonna leave a two block gap at the bottom and we're going to put one here and we're going to run that all the way to the very top there and we're going to stop when we're in line with that top block we're going to do that on all four sides okay now as you can see guys i've put this one here one lower you can go one lower if you want to on some of them it just kind of gives it a little bit of a variation at the bottom there so it doesn't look like such a flat finish now, once you've done that, you want to go ahead and you want to just break a few of the leaves as you go up on each section. So I'm going to go two up, break the third one, then I'll break that one there. On this side here, I don't want it to match up with this side. So we're going to go in different spots here. So maybe one there, one there, one at the very top maybe. So you only want to take like two or three leaves at the most away from each section and again making sure they're not in line with the other blocks okay so you can see one there one there so they're not in line with each other and then on this side finally we're going to put one there um one there yeah that's not in line with anything and then we'll go for the one at the very top now that we got them all done let's go ahead and just put in a few of our birch fences so we're going to put one on probably most of these sections if not all of them um, we'll go like that I think we're just gonna go with all of them yeah we'll just put it on all of them like that all the way around make sure you get it on top of the leaves like that and not on the corner there we go now I'm gonna go ahead with the birch leaves and what we're gonna do here is we're gonna start by not on every section like here for instance we've got two sides so what we're going to do is choose one side of the gap, okay? And we're going to just put a birch leaf on the side of it. We'll choose that one for that one, that one for there. Then we move round to the opposite side. We'll do the same thing. Choose a side that you want to place the leaf on, okay? Again, we're going to come down here. I think we're going to go to this side for that one. Also that side for that one. One there. One there. Maybe one at the very top. Because we've got one at the very top there, what we're going to do is we're going to put one more here and go one more on top of that one. Because we want to keep a peak point on one, like that. Okay, we'll leave one off this side, but we want to have two block extra at the very top there. And because we've got the uh, this one sticking out here, it just gives us a little bit of a square top. So you just want to give it that little point um, on the very top there. Now, once you've done that, all we're going to do now is we're going to just randomly on the center pieces of each side, we're going to just randomly place a single block like this one and maybe one more there, you know, a little gap apart, keeping it fairly low. You don't want to place them too high. Now, because we've got one there, this one's going to go here and maybe down here. Then on the opposite side here, I think we're just going to go for one on this side. So I'm probably going to go for one about there. Okay. And then round this side here again, I'm going to put one just above the fence this time, I think. And I think it's going to stick with the one. Now, if we take a step back, I mean, this looks like a really cool tree. I really like the style of it. And what you can do if you want to is you can actually just get rid of those. And you give it a little bit more of a sort of um, more of a very oval looking shape on it. But I really like this tree design. This is one of my favorite tree designs to use. Uh, just for filling up empty areas. I think it works really well. And it's good to put a few of them in line if you want to boulder off an area. 
Now over here, we're going to go ahead and we're just going to put in a couple of the birch, um, the birch wood like that. I think that'd be nice. Um, we can even go ahead and maybe just put one there diagonally. Maybe something like that. Get rid of the one on that side, maybe. Yeah, something like that. I think that looks pretty good. Now, as you can see, guys, that is a very simple pattern to follow. There's no specifics to it. Um, like, it doesn't have to be this particular block or that particular block. It's just an approximate location for the leaves. And having that sort of layout just makes it very easy to replicate this, this tree with several different versions because you'll be placing the leaves in slightly different places each time, which makes it look very different. And also, if you choose a different height, you'll also make it look different by placing a load of them together because you'll have one that would be nine blocks, one maybe 10, one 11, one 13, you know, and so forth. So you'll have a lot of different variations of the same tree. Okay, now this third and final tree design is kind of like a conifer style tree, which is a bit similar to a spruce looking tree, but it's a little bit more sort of a shaped kind of thing. It's a little bit more curved at the bottom. So let's go ahead and do one design and then we can repeat it anywhere we want. We'll put a few over here and a few in here. And again, this one is very easy to make variations of because it's got a very similar pattern. So we're going to start, I think, right about here. Okay, so we're just in line with this block here. Now, we're going to place a spruce leaf here. Then we're going to go two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight high, I think. Now, these ones you can do between, say, seven and 11 in height, I would say. Now, come down to the bottom and we want to go one up from the bottom and we're going to place one sticking out on each side like this. Then on top of these, we're going to go one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and of course, one, two, three. Now, to give a little bit of variation here, what you can do is you could just randomly put one side that goes up by one more block. Then we want to go down to the bottom block that we just placed on these little rows, and you want to go one up. And you can add two on some sides and on some other sides, add a one like this. OK, so they look different on each side. We can also go two blocks up and place one like that if we want. And then this side around here, put one on this corner. I'm going to go one up from the bottom again. And there we go. We get this nice shape. Now, the reason I say these are very easy to replicate and make different versions is because we can, again, adjust the height of this. So let's make another one right about here, which is just in line with this pillar here. Well, one over to the side of the pillar, just like that one is. This time we're going to go one on top there, and we're going to go two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and we go one more, ten. So we're two blocks higher this time. Again, we repeat the same pattern. So one up from the bottom leaf, we're going to go around all of the bottom. We'll go one, two, three, and this one we'll do four blocks one two three four one two three four and of course one two three and four just like this now i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna put one more there one more there again to give us a little bit of a variation um on the size down the bottom here we're gonna go one two just like we did before we can also because this is a little bit bigger we can go one and two like that giving us a little bit more of a shape uh, we can also leave two and go one up to there. And then on this side here, one more in this corner here, we'll go one, two, just like that. So there you go. There's two variations again of the same tree. And we can come up with so many patterns just following the same principle. We do a straight path through the center to the top, making one single row of uh, reliefs. Add a sort of four to five blocks on each side making sure you're one up from the bottom, which gives us a bit of a curve at the bottom. And then we just add one or two blocks to each little corners just to even out the shape of it and make it feel a little bit more rounded. And it's simple as that. These trees can be put together so quickly. You can make a bunch of these in literally no time at all. So let's go ahead and just put a couple more of them in on this side here. And I'm not even going to count. I'm just going to go for an approximate height. 
All right, guys, and like I said, this is how they all look in vanilla, okay? So this is no texture pack at all. As you can see, this one here is a very thin looking tree, but I think this works really good. Now, again, you can actually change the leaves out. You could be using uh, some oak leaves or dark oak or even spruce leaves on this one. It would still work really well. Over here for the little kind of um, conifer style trees, as you can see, they still look pretty good, even in default. Obviously not as nice as they do with the bushy leaves, but they still look like trees. You can still tell exactly what they are. And I think they work really well. So as you can see, these are the three designs we're going to be using. So we've got the oak tree, we've got this birch tree, and this conifer style tree here. And I think that is plenty of trees for this area. What we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead, turn the texture pack on for the bushy leaves again, and we're going to just work on some little decorations for the rest of the bushy areas and some flowers around this area. Okay, I think for the bushes, we're going to use a different leaf. So we're going to go with the acacia leaves for this one because we want to get another little color tone in there if we can. So let's go ahead and we're just going to come in here for now. And what we want to do is just create little kind of zigzag shape bushes, kind of like this. Okay, we can do the same around the edge here. Okay, and then what we can do is fill some of the gaps up and just kind of Make some little bushes that sort of trail up certain parts of some of the walls We haven't got to go too crazy with them. Just make sure they come up the wall a little bit something like this Maybe we could put one right about there and then just in those gaps We're gonna put a rose bush maybe a lilac in this one maybe another rose bush about here Put a couple of little flowers in between like this and then maybe a little bit of bone meal just in front there just like so just to add a little bit more detail so let's go ahead and just see if we can get a few of these dotted in all of these planters around here and maybe we just get a bunch of flowers all in this one here to make it look really nice so let's go ahead and get those in place all right guys and there we go we've got a bunch of color in here now so as you can see, we've got a bit of a messy looking garden here, but I really like the style of it. So we've got the bushes around the back there with the rose bushes and the lilacs, some dandelions and poppies, and then just a bit of bone meal to kind of fill the area up. We've done the same thing kind of over here, but we added some acacia leaves just around a little edging just to kind of make it look a little bit neater. Um, but to be honest, I kind of like the messy look garden. So I think I prefer it without too many of the leaves around the edges like this. Um, and then this, again, the same kind of thing over here. We just made some small bushes, put in some flowers, and just really kind of just made it look a little bit like a scruffy garden. But I like that look with this kind of castle. I didn't want to make it too neat, but I think it works pretty good. Now, with that being said, let's start working on a few other details. Now, when I originally done this castle, I don't know whether I done cobblestone in the ground or not. So you guys, if you want to, you can go ahead and add some cobblestone into the ground here to give it a little bit more of a kind of rough look on the ground. And then what I like to do here is I like to add in some mossy cobblestone just dotted around randomly. I think this is a good way to just add in a little bit of color and also to make it just have that little bit of a roughed up ground i mean this area would have been walked in quite a lot so you'd have you know you'd have quite a few little mossy patches especially where rain, rain may have gathered in little puddles and stuff so let's go ahead and just add in a few random spots of mossy cobblestone we don't need to add too many and keep them fairly spaced out we don't want them all close together something kind of like this Areas like this, when you've got stairs, you'd probably get a little bit more gather. Maybe something a bit more like this. Uh, little corners, you may get little kind of areas like this with it as well. You know? So just kind of go with where you feel that you, you'd get like maybe rainwater gather or something like that. There we go. Once you've got some mossy cobblestone in place, you can also go ahead and put just a few up here. Again, going very kind of very sparing with it really not too much just an odd little spot here or there maybe something like that maybe a couple in here yeah something kind of like that i think that looks pretty good 
Then once you've done that, we're going to go ahead and get our grass out. Now, if you remember, we went ahead and we added in just a few little patches of dirt or coarse dirt. We're going to go ahead and on most of these over on this side here, we're going to go ahead and just put in a bit of grass like this. Something kind of like that. OK, you can leave the odd one if you wanted to, and you can also add more if you wish to. Then up the top here, we're going to do something very similar. Is that this one's going to have um, a lot more because we've got a lot of cool dirt up here. So we're just going to kind of just dot it now and again, sort of diagonally. OK, single ones here and there. And then now and again, you will just place some like this on two spots next to each other. But keep it fairly spaced out, though. There we go. So we should have something that looks a bit like this when we're done. Now I'm going to jump to the acacia leaves here. And in fact, I'm going to actually switch the acacia leaves out for the oak leaves. I think the oak leaves are going to be a bit better here. And what we're going to do by the gate here, we're just going to make a little bush. So something like that. Nothing crazy. We'll bring it up here. Maybe one there. And then make some kind of bush a bit like that. And I think we might just bring it up around here. Let's just jump it up in here. Just so it kind of goes onto the roof. See how we broke that one slab? So that it can kind of break through the roof. Just make it look a little bit rougher. We can put one more up there maybe. Now let me just grab a couple of the rose bushes. And what we'll do is we'll put one there. And we'll put one just there maybe. Maybe this one will move over one like that. And then we could just go ahead and put in a bit of grass in between those like that. Just a little bushed area there. Now we're going to repeat the same kind of thing. So over here, let's just do something similar. Go ahead get in some of your leaves. Something like this. Maybe they running up the wall a little bit. And then again, we're going to go ahead and just put in a couple of rose bushes. And then I think the rest, we're just going to just put in some grass. Something like that. Okay. Right. Now that we've got that all in place, I think we've got most of the little flower pot, uh, flower areas in place. One last one, I think, is going to go probably here underneath this window. So let's just put in a little bit of a kind of bush like this. Okay. Then I think again, we'll grab ourselves a bit of dirt and behind here, let's put another bit of dirt there. We'll put a couple of rose bushes there and one behind there. And then again, we're going to go ahead and we're just going to sort of surround what we can on here with some spaced out grass. Perfect. Over here where we've got the horse pens, we're going to put in a cauldron inside each one of these just for them to drink in. Now, bearing in mind, guys, I did just realize this. We've got this single gap here for the horses. We would actually have to put gates all the way across um, because horses take up more than one block. So there we go. So the horses will be able to get inside there now. Now, let's get ourselves a bucket of water and maybe some barrels. And what we're going to quickly do here is go ahead and put some water in these. Then we're going to just find some little spots to kind of store just a couple of barrels, maybe a couple there. Maybe one in the corner there. We can put some grass in front of it. In fact, we could also put something like that. Maybe over the side here, we could put a couple just kind of standing. Maybe like that, just a couple. Yeah, and I think that looks pretty good for there. Now up here where we've got these little windows, I think we're going to get our oak leaves. We'll get rid of that fence and we're going to make it sort of dangle down the side here. We'll put one on there. 
something like that. And maybe we could put one in there, one there, one there. And then why not put in a couple of flower pots? Kind of like that. And I guess for that one, what we'd do is we'd get maybe some of these. And we can go one, two, and three. Now you can put any flowers in them. It doesn't matter which ones you go with. But the red just stands out a little bit. Okay, right. That's looking good for this area here. I think I like this now. Down the back here, I think this is good for a little kind of storage area. So down here, what I would probably do is start with maybe some barrels. We could put in a bunch of these, something like that. Maybe even a couple standing upright. Um, maybe even a couple more down in this corner. Okay, now to fill up the area here with some more stuff, what we're going to do is just make some little kind of stacked areas. So let's go ahead and get some of the um, coal ore like this. And we could just fill randomly areas like that. The block of coal, why not fill up a nice big chunk of this area here? Maybe up to about there. Kind of like, kind of like a three by three area. We can just throw in, oops, throw in something like that. We'll come back to that in just a second. Then we're going to need some wood. So let's go ahead. In fact, while we've got the coal there, let's go ahead. Get rid of that one there. And we'll put in some logs. Coming down to probably about there. That one can come one shorter. And then this one can come to about there something like that then we put one there one there maybe like so let's just put in a few sort of campfires on here this will look a bit like kind of um chopped up firewood sort of thing okay and then we can just go ahead and put these all out There we go. Excellent. We've got a load of chopped firewood here. We've got some coal. We've got some proper uh, some coal ore and some coal. Over here, let's go ahead. We've got some iron um, for the blacksmith. Maybe he can smelt some of that up when he's not busy. Something along those lines there. And then finally, we do have a stable, of course. So let's go ahead and just stack up some sort of bunches of hay as we kind of can. So something kind of along these lines. Again, keeping it quite messy. Not, you know, nothing too organized. Um, something like that, maybe. Maybe a couple more up here. But again, nothing too much. There we go. We've got a nice little storage area. Now, I'm going to quickly get some oak trapdoors. Let's get some oak trapdoors. And we'll go ahead and where the coal is over here. Let's just put some of these in here to make it look like it's kind of um, almost like it's sort of got a fence across, you know, to kind of keep it secure. Something like that. Yeah, I think that will do good. Maybe we'll even get in a lantern about there, one on there, possibly one there, Another one here, just to light the area up a little bit without overdoing it. Then, of course, with the leaves, let's go ahead on here and we're going to bring some more across here, a little decoration. And we want to just kind of bring it down a little bit, so maybe... Maybe we'll put one there. We'll go one underneath like that. Then we can bring one onto the corner here. Just kind of random. We want little bits to look like they're dropping down because it makes it just kind of feel a little bit more kind of um, overgrown. And down this little sort of area here where the um, storage is, this would be a kind of overgrown area, I think. Let's get some flowers. And of course, we're going to go ahead, put some flower pots just randomly on here like this. There 
there we go. And I think one last thing, just to add in a little bit of detail on here, is maybe just throw in a couple of anvils as well. I think they kind of just look, they look good in a little storage area. You know, just as if they're like, you know, just ready in case the, the um, blacksmith over here needs one and stuff like that. I think that looks pretty good. And I think that will do for that storage area, guys. I don't think we really need to do anything more than that. I think that is going to do it. Um, if you want to, you could extend the bushes into this area here and overgrow, overgrown some in here, maybe. Something maybe along these kind of lines. Yeah, something like that. Add a little bit more extra color in there. Alright guys, I think we're going to go ahead and wrap it up just there for today's episode. Now we've got quite a lot of work done. We've done the trees, we've done the catapult, we filled in all of the grass and bushy areas. We've got the storage area done in at the back here and some of this areas down here. So there's still a bunch of work to do guys. We are going to be adding in some more little seating areas and some stuff like that. Some, something with this big bit of space here. Something up here, um, even this balcony at the very top here, we've got some stuff we can do with that. Um, around the back of the castle, around here, there is a load of work to be done around the back here. But we're going to work on that a bit later on when we do the garden expansion. So we're going to be coming back to that a bit later on. But guys, I keep getting a lot of questions of people asking me, is the castle series finishing? How many more episodes and stuff like that? Um, no, the series is not finishing in and I do not have a clue how many more episodes it's going to be. There is going to be a lot more episodes, but they are going to be coming in a little bit slower at the moment because we're getting to that stage now where things are starting to come together quite a lot. So I'm kind of running out of fresh ideas. I want to keep the castle looking fresh. I want lots of different ideas and not just repeating the same pattern with everything. So I'm trying to be a bit more careful with what I'm building and how I'm building. And the layout of stuff. So there's loads more still to come, guys. Loads, loads more still to come. We've got the automatic storage system. We're going to be having the nether portal room, which is probably going to be a hidden room. And then we've got a bunch of other rooms to do. we still got more bedrooms to do, guest bedrooms, uh, a little tavern, some more areas for some more soldiers, um, possibly a ballroom. There is so many, so many, so many ideas. And thank you guys for all of your ideas. Oh, and a dungeon. You guys keep telling me about a dungeon. Dungeon's coming very soon. I've been working on that one. That's going to be coming very soon. Um, but yeah, guys, there's so much more to come from the castle yet. So please don't worry about it not finishing or not being completed. We're going to be finishing it. It's just slowing down a little bit because I'm trying to make sure that it turns out good. I don't want to do uh, half of a good interior and then rush the rest of it and it turn out to be a crappy interior. I want to make it a nice interior and make it work very well with everything else that we already have. Anyway, guys, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up there. So as always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy this episode, please be sure to smash that like button. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Just don't forget to hit that bell so you get notified every time I post a new video. But for now, this is Blue Nerd signing out, and I will catch you guys in the next one.